What's going on, mi gente? It's Diego Montalban back uh, today to talk a little bit about the news of Jefferson Farfan having surgery on his left knee again. Honestly, um, I was going to wait to talk about Jefferson Farfan and 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 even Pablo Guerrero, to be honest. But with this news, I wanted to, I guess, talk about it today. So don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Let's go. Jefferson Farfan had another operation on his left knee after the treatments that he was having just weren't working. So now he's out for two more months, hasn't played for Alianza yet in, in this their, their season that had just started. So what's going to happen? He's out for two more months, which basically means we shouldn't count on Jefferson Farfan for the repechaje for Peru, right? And this was a question I brought up right after the Paraguay game, right? Based on what we've seen from Peru, is it fair to say that Paulo Guerrero and Jefferson Farfan's time with La Selección, with La Blanquiroja, is up? Well, I think based on these injuries and, and what we're seeing, you, you could say yes, right? You could make a, a solid argument for yes. Now, like I said, Jefferson Farfan, two months out. He definitely won't make the repechaje. Could he make the World Cup? I mean, yes, obviously. There's there's enough time with it being in November, right? Mid-November. Um, but like I said, or as I've been saying on my social media for a while now, since since these last couple games and the qualifiers, Peru, I don't think, based on what they've been playing, how they've been playing, they've been doing well with it, with you know the players that have stepped up in their in Paulo Guerrero and Jefferson Farfang's absence, who would you take out? Is one, two. By bringing both of them, if you were to bring both of them, they're 37, 38 respectively. You're taking away from somebody else, in my opinion. So, my opinion on my social media has been. I get that these 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 guys are icons. I respect all that they have done for Peru. I, I honestly do. I love them. I think we all do. But we need to be honest and say, I don't think we could bring both. I honestly think we can only bring one. And now, based off of what's going on with Jefferson Verfang, I would say maybe Paulo Guerrero. Why? Well, Paulo Guerrero's knee is supposedly good. I don't know what's going on with his club stuff. We're waiting and waiting and waiting. So um, we'll see what happens there. Once he signs for a new club, if he if he if he you know is playing well, is getting time, has the continuity, then sure, why not? I think if you if you analyze both of the positions, right? Paulo Guerrero is a nine. Jefferson Ferran can play as a nine, but he plays used to play more as a 10, as a wing, on the wings. We have coverage now on the wings that I think could play more than Jefferson Farfán because right now he can only, even after the surgery, let's just say it goes well, whatever, he's only been giving about 20 minutes, 25, 30 minutes tops, right? That's the thing. And the other thing is Paulo Guerrero. He's a number nine. That's where we've had a little bit more of a problem. Yes, we got La Padula. But after La Padula, who do you say should be the number nine? Is it Valera, Ormeño, Ruiz Diaz? I don't know. That's why I think Guerrero would be a better option to take. If, if you're only taking one. If you're only taking one, that, I think Guerrero would be the better, the better option for that reason. Because you're going to start with La Padula, obviously. And then... You give Guerrero maybe the last 25, 30 minutes. You could do the same with Farfan, but I think who are you going to take out, right? You have Carrillo, you have Cueva, you have Peña, or even La Padula, right? You have the, those those four attacking spots. I I just don't, I don't see Farfan being there because I, I, I can't, I can't picture him taking a spot right now over the players that have come up to, you know, to help out, like Raciel Garcia, like Canchita, like 
even Concha did in the friendly, like um, Gabriel Costa, who has been great in Chile, but hasn't really gotten a big chance. So you're taking away these options. You're taking away these opportunities from younger players that will most likely be part of the next qualifiers. Whereas if you think about it, Jefferson Farfang and Paulo Guerrero most likely won't or shouldn't. Again, this is not to say, this is not hate towards them because, like I said, they're icons of Peruvian football. You know, I love them. We love them. But the age and, and, and the injuries, it is unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Trust me. I wish they could be a little younger and, and not have these injuries because I think they would still be playing. But unfortunately, this is, this, is, this is what we're working with. And Peru has to move on at some point from these icons, right? Um, just like we did from Pizarro, from Juan Manuel Vargas. Like, you have to, you know, from Chori Palacios, from Solano. Like, you have to move on. Yes, it hurts. It hurts. But, but the positive is that Peru has been doing well without neither of them. So that's something to think about, guys. Um, we'll see what happens with, you know, with Farfang's surgery. They said two months. We'll see Paulo Guerrero what happens. What club will he join? Will he join a club? You know, he should. Uh, when? <laughs> we're, we're, we're all in the dark there. So I hope to bring you guys all that info once I have that. Thank you guys always for being with me. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share. See you guys next time.